The First World War ended in 1918. Intended to be the war to end all wars, it was anything but. The Treaty of Versailles, instead of creating terms for peaceful, lasting coexistence between the European nations, exacted a costly revenge on the losing central powers. This treaty created a temporary peace, but really just paved the way for the rise of the fascist regimes in Europe and the outbreak of World War II. After World War I, the economies of the losing powers were devastated, both by the cost of war and the revenge extracted by the Allied powers. This situation, along with the general discontent of the people, allowed for the rise of first Mussolini in Italy in 1922, Hideki Tojo and Emperor Hirohito in Japan in the late 1920s, Hitler in Germany in 1933, and then Franco in Spain in 1936. At first, France and Britain adopted a policy of appeasement, determined to avoid another world war. However, as Germany became more militaristic and began to annex the regions surrounding it, France and Britain became nervous. Eventually, in 1939, Germany and the Soviet Union attacked Poland. France and Britain went to the aid of Poland, and the Second World War broke out in Europe. I am speaking to you from the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. Consequently, this country is at war with Germany. Prior to the outbreak of World War I, one of the countries taken over by Germany was its neighbor, Austria. Austria is a small landlocked country located in Europe on Germany's southeastern border. After World War I, the Austro-Hungarian Empire broke apart and a section became known as the Republic of Austria. Austria struggled to recover after the war, facing many problems including starvation, bankruptcy, and social and political unrest. In 1936, Italy formed an alliance with Germany and withdrew its protection from Austria. In 1938, Nazi Germany took hold of the weak Austrian government, and on March 15, 1938, Hitler entered Austria's capital, Vienna. Living in Vienna at this time were Eugene Braunwald and his family. Eugene was born in 1929 in Vienna. He lived with his mother, father. Well, we uh, lived, uh, when I was a child, we lived in uh, the city of Vienna. Uh, Austria, where I had been born. Well, we lived in an apartment. At that time, in Europe, in the cities, people uh, didn't live in separate houses. Our well, daily life was very similar to what it is uh, for a child here. Uh, in the morning, uh, um, my mother uh, made breakfast, and um, I went off to school. And then uh, I came home from school around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. A teacher who came in twice a week, and I took lessons on the grand piano. And uh, I also, very fortunately, also had an English tutor. Because in uh, primary school at that time, uh, they didn't uh, teach foreign languages. And uh, uh, I was very, very lucky that my parents had the foresight to get me to learn English. My memories in childhood uh, being taken for walks by my mother um, in some of the lovely parks in Vienna, close to where we lived. My other memories are my my uh, father taking me to the soccer games and also to um, my father taking me for walks along the Danube Canal. At this time, Austria had a Jewish population of 192,000, most living in Vienna. During the Nazi occupation, hundreds of thousands of Jews emigrated from Austria with only 57,000 remaining in 1939. Well, we had a lot of contact with the Nazis. Our contact with the Nazis. So the first thing 
of course, is, uh, is uh, Jewish children could not stay in uh, schools. So we were immediately expelled from the schools. And then uh, uh, my father's business was very close to the apartment in which we lived. And there was a, uh, uh, a Nazi who came in to um, liquidate uh, and terminate uh, my father's business. And he uh, was in the uh, special secret service called the SS. And, uh, uh, and sometimes he would wander into our apartment. But none of us, fortunately, were ever hurt physically. Among those who emigrated were Eugene Braunwald and his family. Most Jews left to escape the persecution by the Nazi regime. During the time Hitler was in power, 12 million people were killed in his purposeful extermination. Among this number were six million Jews. Eugene and his family escaped from Austria and sought shelter first in Switzerland, then in Britain, and finally settled in the United uh, States. Because um, the Nazis uh, um, annexed Austria uh, into Germany, and uh, the Nazis uh, uh, hated the Jews, we were Jewish, and uh, uh, they put a lot of the Jews into prison and ultimately the concentration camps. And uh, uh, we left, we uh, really escaped from there so that uh, we wouldn't be uh, killed. Between 1938 and 1939, Jewish immigration from Austria and Germany was at its highest point. This was mainly due to increased assaults on Jews and Kristallnacht. However, many Jews had difficulties finding places to live because most European countries were reluctant to accept more Jewish immigrants. Additionally, the United States passed strict immigration laws with only 27,000 spots available to the 309,000 refugees seeking spaces. The majority of the Jewish refugees settled in South America, with most in Argentina, Brazil, Chile, and Bolivia. You were Jewish, you couldn't stay in Austria. Mm -hmm. Well, you could stay in Austria, but you would probably end up in a concentration camp. So uh, virtually all of the people were either killed, or if they were lucky, they uh, escaped the way we did. Approximately 67,000 Jews did not make it out of Austria. Most of these people were placed in concentration camps or killed. Although many Jewish immigrants encountered difficulties in settling in the United States, Eugene and his family were eventually able to settle in New York City after living in England for a year. At first the route was very hard, but then uh, it was what you would call Operation Bootstrap. Uh, you know, by their own hard work and ingenuity and cleverness and uh, um, intellectual strength and ambition, they were able to do very well. When we moved uh, to America, we, um, we uh, lived in Brooklyn for the first time when we came over. We settled in Brooklyn because uh, um, the uh, family that brought us over and was responsible for uh, coming over were an aunt of my mother's and they lived in Brooklyn, and uh, uh, they uh, uh, actually rented a house for us. At this time, New York was growing culturally and economically after the Great Depression. The president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, was changing the country by creating job opportunities, promoting the arts, and improving living conditions. Eugene lived in an apartment in New York with his parents. Upon arrival in America, he went to junior high school and eventually attended NYU as a pre-med student. He became an acclaimed cardiologist and is now living in Weston, Massachusetts.